Hello, and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. If this is your first time, thank you so much for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Also, if you'd like to be notified the minute I have of new tutorials, don't forget to hit the bell, and you will be notified the minute I have new tutorials posted. Also, please don't forget to hit the like button. I'd appreciate that very much. I'm grateful for everyone that has subscribed to my channel. It still surprises me that people are interested in, in what I have to show. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you how to quickly uh, set up a template master to make a gable box. And I'm going to show you how to quickly do two different designs, but you can use anything to quickly design gable boxes. I think I might have said gable bag. Um, it's really easy to do to uh, set up a master and then you'll have it to use over and over again. And all you have to do is Google gable box template. You could find dozens of free ones. All you do is click on one, either copy it or save it to your picture file and then just open it up and picture it and get started. So I'm going to show you how to quickly um, set up a master so that you can use it over and over to create different uh, different uh, designs. First of all, I want to make this a little wider because it doesn't need this large flap right here to glue um, to glue the the bag together, the favorite bag. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to cut out and picture, cut out of picture with the cookie cutter shape. I'm going to choose the square. It defaults to that if you haven't used the software uh, yet today. And I'm just going to make a rectangle. It's playing games with me today. I'm just going to make a rectangle around the area that I want to crop because I want to make this shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next and done. And I'm just going to click right here on the side and just shrink this down because you really don't need that wide of an area to um, glue that shut. Now I'm going to go here to cut out and picture, add a colored shape. I'm going to change it to white. And I'm going to drop it down just one layer. Resize it so that it's just covering up that area. That extra flap there. I want to go ahead and cut my gable box out so that I can eventually save it as a PNG because I'm going to take it into uh, Cricut to cut it out later. So I'm going to go here to cut out and picture, cut out of picture by color selection. I'm going to drop this all the way down to zero and I'm going to hit the outer edge because a lot of times when you're um, trying to crop a border from around, if it's a solid border from around a picture or a person, it's easier to crop out that solid color rather than cropping out the picture itself. So I'm going to just click in all the areas that need to be cut away because I'm going to turn this into a PNG later and I'm going to hit next. Now you can see that the outline is now faded a bit because I chose to cut away the outer edge. So now I have to switch it back so that I'll be keeping the gable box template and losing the white edge. So you go right here to select opposite area and as you can see once you click that it makes that outline nice and dark. I'm going to hit done and then I'm going to just delete everything underneath those, those areas that I cut and now I'm just going to extend this a bit by pulling it all the way over to this edge and going to do the same on this side. Now that I have all of the white edge cut out and I just have my gable bag. Now I'm going to set this up as my reusable template in picture it so that I can use it over and over again quickly to design any type of gable bag that I need. So I'm going to go to cut out and picture, cut out of picture once again by color selection. I'm going to drop that uh, slider all the way down to zero and this time I'm just going to click in each area, hit next and done. Go once again, cut out in picture, cut out of picture with the with a, by color selection. And I'm going to choose each air. Oops, I forgot to drop that down to zero. So I'm not going to cut out my mistake. I'm just going to show you how to get around that. 
all you do is go ahead and slide that down to zero hit reset and then I'm ready to click that box hit next and done I'm going to do the same thing until I have all of those boxes that I want to change so once again I'm sliding that down to zero and now all I have left to get are these two spots because the bottom can be white it doesn't matter I can change this this edge if I want but that really doesn't matter because it's not really going to show anyway so I'm just going to stick with this piece and that piece so I'm going once again to those same functions don't forget to drop that slider down but if you do you know how to change that now and one last time to get that last piece just like that okay so now I'm ready to start designing and it, as you can see on my tray here and you'll see on on um, the layers panel you'll see it made a layer of each of these pieces so each time I click on a piece you see a blue square uh, shows up around that piece in my layers panel but now I'm going here to the tray and which looks like a film strip so sometimes I'll call it a film strip or a tray um, I'm going to uh, I have everything open, all the graphics open. I already have the kids' pictures open. I've cropped out. If I needed to crop out any of the backgrounds, that's already been done. But I think all of these were already free PNG, so I'm good to go. And now I'm just going to start designing. So first, I'm going to click on the handle. I'm going to click Cut Out of Picture. But this time, I'm going to go to Fill Cut Out or Picture. And then I want to fill it with a picture and make sure when you get to this, before you get to this point, make sure you always have your graphics open that you want to use so that it will go by really quickly. And now I'm just going to drag up the images that I want in the different spots. And so for the handle, I'm just going to use the top of that graphic with the little Laker symbol. I'm going to hit done. Next, I'm going to click on this section. I'm going to go once again to cut out a picture, fill cut out a picture with a picture, and I'm going to drag up once again the image that I want to use. And you see it just pops right in there. And now for this section, I want to add uh, the birthday boy and this Laker symbol. So since this, um, this symbol, um, I'm just going to leave it white for now. Uh, all I need to do is just drag up the graphics that I want to use there because these are already PNGs and PNGs are um, almost equivalent to an SVG. It it functions the same way as far as um, keep leaving the background out. The only difference is when you take it into Cricut, if you wanted to use the, the function that breaks it down into separate pieces, that is not possible. That you can only break it down to separate pieces in Cricut using, I forgot, I think it's contour. I'll check for sure once I'm in there. But um, I, um, if you want to break it in, have all these pieces, the, the purple break, you know, uh, taken out and the gold taken out and the black, you would have to do that um, only with SVGs. It doesn't work with PNGs. So now I have my little Lakers volleyball, volleyball, basketball here. And then I'm going to add um, a, little, a picture of the child that, that might be having a birthday these are just free uh, graphics that I grabbed off the internet to show you how easy it is to do this and then you might want to add a little basket over here and just so I can make it look like it's the actual size like he could throw it over there I'm gonna kinda line it up by putting it on the basketball I don't I don't think they're that much bigger yeah that should work and I'm gonna just drop that over here so now it looks like the kid is looking toward the basketball like he's going to make a shot. And you can enlarge, shrink this down, whatever you want, um, this, this one graphic here as well. So now for this edge, I'm just going to use, for this piece rather, I'm just going to use that same graphic, this one. And I'm going to go once again to cut out in picture, fill cut out our picture, click the apple to add a picture. And this time I'm going to add that same Lakers logo here hit done now we're going to work on this piece I'm going to go to cut out and pictures fill cut out a picture with the picture and this one I want the L panel so I'm going to put the giant L on this side so just like that you've designed a custom 
favorite bag. Now, if you didn't want to, if you didn't want to save ink and you wanted to make this a little, a bit more colorful, you could easily just go here to cut out and picture, add a colored shape, change that shape to, to gold since I have so much purple, hit done. Now I'm going to just drag that uh, gold square by cl left clicking on it and I'm going to drag it under the last cutout piece. Remember this piece at the very back is still there, our original uh, uh, favor bag, uh, gable bag. So I'm going to drag that back to the back, but I'm bringing my gold shape, my gold square right above that, that um, original template that we were working with. And now I'm just going to line it up with the lines. I thought I had this cropped out already. Maybe I didn't. Then I, oh, I see what I did. I, I had that piece cut out, but I didn't have to change it. So I'm going to bring that down too. So now I have my gold square. I'm just going to drag it over. Same thing with this piece. That piece, I think I do need to crop out. I had one cropped out already. So I'll bring that up, the one that I had cropped, and place it over there. I'm going to continue to resize this square into a rectangle so that it's just filling in the area of the box that I want it in. And just like that, you quickly designed a Lakers gable box for, for your party. So that extra color can be in or out. I'll take it back out because I like the way it looked with the clean look. So I'm just going to delete that gold box and you have a gable box. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this symbol, this symbol, and all of these things. So before I get started, I'm going to make myself a new sheet. I'm going to go here to cut out and picture, add a colored shape, hit done. Now I'm going to bring up the Boss Baby image because I want to use those colors. Then I'll delete this once I'm done. But for now, I want to change this gradient to these colors. So I'm going to click on paint and color effects, fill with the gradient. I'm going to go ahead and choose my pattern that I want to use early. Let's see. And you could choose any one of these patterns. I like this one because it kind of gives your image um, the look like it's kind of a metal metallic sheen. So I'm going to go with that one. Now I'm going to go here where it says custom two-tone color. I'm going to click on the top color wheel and I'm going to go to the lightest spot of the blue in this image, which is trying to get as close to the edge of the lightest area of blue as I can. I'm going to hit done one time and then I'm going to click on the bottom color wheel to change to the darkest color of blue in this image. So that gives me an exact gradient. That's the, that is the exact color of the image that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done and done. I can delete this by right clicking, hitting delete. And then I'm going to just spread this to the whole page. Just like that. Now I'm going to go back to my gable box to make our second gable box. And this one is going to be a boss baby theme. So first of all, I want to make an, a new background to use with this one. I found these stripes and I'm going to elongate them. But I want them to be a lot thinner, so I'm going to make my own pattern by using a couple of these and I think I think I need to move it over a little bit more to mimic the white space that looks good so now I'm going to change the color of every other bar so that I can make it match exactly with the theme of the boss baby so I'm going to go to cut out and picture cut out of picture by color selection and I'm going to choose every other stripe. Hit next and done. And now I'm going to pull out all of the white by going to cut out in picture, cut out of picture, 
by color selection. I'm going to choose all similar areas, click in the first white column, and it will take out all the white columns. Remember, this is where I put the two together, so it's fine. And I'm going to hit next and done. Oh, before I hit done, I almost messed up. I would have had the, just the white background, but I want to switch it so that I'm keeping the bars. So I'm going to click here to switch to the opposite area and hit done. Now I'm going to get rid of two of the layers here and I'm just keeping the stripes that I, every other stripe that I pulled out and then the master of all the stripes together. So now I'm going to br bring up my Boss Baby image from down in the tray and I'm going to click on the layer that I want to change the colors, which is the one that I'm going to change to the lighter blue. So I'm going to go here to paint and color effects, fill with a solid color, and I'm going to click in my lightest part on the boss baby and click done. Now you're not seeing the color change because I didn't change, switch the layer. So now I'm going to drag my bars I just changed or my um, stripes I just changed onto the top layer. And automatically I have colors that are matching Boss Baby. Now I can change these blues to the darker blue exactly, or I can leave them like this. And I think I'm gonna leave them like this. I like uh, that matches well enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete the Boss Baby. And now I'm going to go to Cutout in Picture, Cutout of Picture with the cookie cutter shape. And I'm going to cut out this image so that it will just be one JPEG or one PNG by itself. I'm going to hit next and done. And then I'm going to delete the two layers beneath. And I always do that so that when you're dragging it into the new picture, um, you, you won't be dragging all those layers. It makes it a lot easier to um, drag it in and it doesn't take as long for the computer to process it that way. So I also want these stripes going in the horizontal position. So I'm going to go to size and position, rotate, and hit left, and done. I'm going to go back to my gable box, and now I'm ready to design this box. So first I want to start by changing the handle by going to cut out in pictures, fill cut out or picture with a picture, and I'm going to drag up that gradient that I designed a short while ago. Now for this one, I think I just want to add the Boss Baby logo there. So I'm just going to drag that up. I didn't have to change the panel. I just dra uh, drug up the Boss Baby logo that's already in PNG format so it doesn't have a background. And I'm just going to size that here at the top. Next, I want to add uh, my image of the child that the birthday party is for and I'm going to shrink him down some and I just uh, grab these as free PNGs off of the internet to use but um, if you want to if you have in mind how you want to design your favorite bags you can always ask the parent to take a picture of the child in that position or this one just worked out because I, when I saw it I said oh that's great I can use it to make it look like he's leaning on the baby boss uh, logo. So now I'm going to bring up the Baby Boss logo again, shrink it down a little bit, and put it here. And then I'm going to bring the baby over. I need to shrink the, ba the Boss Baby logo down a little more so it'll look like the baby's hand is on top of it. So I'm just going to resize that a little more. And then I'm going to grab both of them by dragging from one side to the other to get both of them so I can move them at the same time so that I can put them in the middle of the box. Now for this side, I think I'm going to use the gradient again. So I'm going to click on that box, go to cut out and picture, fill cut out our picture with the picture and drag my gradient up again. And I don't like how plain this looks. If you want it to save ink, of course, once again, you could leave it just like this, but I wanted to, uh, I wanted to try it this other background. So I'm going to click on the piece behind the baby. I'm going to go once again to that same function, cut out in picture, fill cut out our picture with a picture, and I'm just going to drag up those stripes. And now I can resize the stripes, make them as small as I want them, 
or as big as I want them. And I think I like them about that size. And I'm going to move it around so that it doesn't, I'm going to stretch them a bit so that it doesn't interfere or, or make the bottom boss baby, the part that says boss, I want it to stand out. So I'm resizing my stripe so that I can put it where it will, the darkest part of boss baby will be completely in the lighter sections. So yeah, that works pretty good. I don't like that half, half stripe. So I'm going to resize it a little more so that I can get rid of that half stripe. I want that to be a full stripe at the top. Okay. That works. Since the top is blending in a little, I can go here to special effects shadow. I can choose a soft shadow and just drag it out a little on the edges. And now it stands out more from the background. Or I can use a different uh, technique. I'm going to put, once again, I want the baby on the side. So I'm going to put him over here on this side. And I'm going to put the Boss Baby logo once again so it looks like he's leaning on it. Resize it a little bit. And I don't want the baby floating, so I'm, I'm putting his foot on the line, of, which will be the bottom. Oops. If you make a mistake like that, just go right up, hit the back arrow, and it puts it right back in place. All right, so I'm going to click on the boss baby sign, and I'm going to put it under his hand. But as you can see, it's blending in a lot here, and I want to make it stand out. So I can go to Edge Effect, Highlight Edge. First, I need to click on the boss baby. Then go to Edge Effect, Highlight Edge, choose the Thick Edge, change it to White, and all of a sudden, it stands out nice and bright. I can shrink this down a little more. Take the baby up a little so it'll look like he is leaning on it rather than it just floating. So you can either do it that way. I can change this one also. Take the shadow away if I want by going to special effect, hitting the X, it removes the shadow. You could do the same thing to remove this white border. You just click on the X. So I'm going to switch this one so that it glows like that one. Go to edge effect, highlight edge, choose the thick edge, click on more. What was that? <laughs> uh, customize the edge. And then I'm going to change it to white by clicking on the white box or if you wanted if you needed to change it to a color that wasn't in there you could go to the color wheel and of course change it to any color in here that you wanted to but i just want it to be white so i'm going to click the preset white and now hit done and done again and i'm going to resize it a little bit so that it looks like his hand is on it again and if i bring him to the front on both of those so I'm just bringing him to the front on both those layers his hand would automatically be on top anyway all right maybe I'll add a shadow to the little boy maybe just to make him stand out a little just bring this I'm just bringing the shadow out a little bit to give it that 3d effect and then I'm gonna go to customize the shadow I'm gonna make it more transparent so it looks less obvious and then soften it a bit and you can do that for both of both of those I'll do the same thing for this one add a shadow use a soft shadow drag it out a little bit customize the shadow make it a little more transparent and slide it toward the right to make it softer and now you have almost your second bag. I still need to change this one. And I think I'll change that to the stripes as well. So we'll have stripes and gradient on all sides. So I'm going to go once again to the cutout and picture. Fill cutout or picture with a picture. And I'll just drag up my stripes. And stretch them out so that they're the same size as the other one. Other ones. And I'm just eyeballing that.
And there you go. You have your second uh, really quick gable bag design. And now I'll show you how to bring these into Cricut. So I'm going to go here to File, Save As. I'm going to click here, scroll down until I get to PNG, which is Portable Networks Graphic is what it says here, but that's a PNG. So you click on the PNG, and then you're going to change this to whatever name you want. So I'm going to give it Boss Gable. Save it to my desktop for quick access. And now I'm ready to take it into Cricut. So I'm going to open up my Cricut, choose Upload, Upload Image. I'm going to click Browse to browse to the directory where I saved it, which is the desktop. You would click whichever directory you saved it to. I'm going to click on Desktop here. I'm going to look for my Gable box, and there it is. As you can see, the outline is already gone. I'm going to choose complex. I always use complex so that it won't change any of my colors. And I'll show you in some of the other ones how it will change the colors if you use simple and also moderate. So whenever you want your colors to stay the exact same color, which should be all the time, um, use complex. If I was just you know, bringing in something that was black and white, then I could use simple or moderate. So I'm going to click continue. I'm going to zoom out so I can see my whole design, and that's looking good. So I'm ready to continue. I'm going to save this as a print and cut right here. I'm going to show you a way to do it as a cut file to make it a larger gable box in another tutorial. But for now, we're just going to do the print and cut and make this smaller gable box. I'm going to give it, it already has the name that you saved it to, so you don't have to change the name here. But once you have it in your on your canvas, you will have to give it a name when you save that project. So now I see they have my gable box loaded here. I'm going to click Insert Images. And there's my box. I'm going to zoom out again so I can see it. And now in Print and Cut, you can only make your images um, 9.25 by 9.25 by 6.75. And so if I was going to make this using those measurements, I would click on it. And here on size, on width, width would need to be the largest size. So I would make this the 9.25. And then as long as this comes under 6.75, I would be okay. But as you can see, this is 6.86. So that if I hit make it, it would say it was incompatible. All I have to do is now I know I need to change the lower number. And once I change the lower number, the which is the height, the width will be perfect to, to be able to cut it out. So I'm going to change my height now to 6.75, which is the maximum of either the height or the width if the if the other measurement is 9.25. So now it's just dropped it down a little bit to 9.101 by 6.75. And now when I hit make it, it will go to make it. So you're seeing right here, this is going to make my gable box. This is about one, two, three, four, five. This will make about a five inch gable box. Um, if you do it this way, but if you want to make it larger, then you'll have to use the slice image and you'll have to make a little adjustment so that you could put it together. So now you're all set to go. You'll want to change this to two copies. So you'll have two halves of your gable box. So right here where it says project coffee, coffees, where it says, I think I need some coffee, uh, where it says project copies, just click up. It'll print two copies of this. When you hit connect, continue, it's going to tell you to connect your machine. My machine isn't on, so it's not found. But um, first you would send it to print. 
by clicking here, send to printer. It'll bring up this image. You're going to choose which printer you want it to print to. And I have quite a few printers, <laughs> uh, uh, but my favorites are the Epsons. So um, I'll just leave it on this Epson or choose the others. And then you decide whether you want bleed on or bleed off. The reason you would want to have bleed on is just in case the Cricut is not calibrated exactly like it's supposed to be, where when it reads your... The reason why you would want to leave bleed on is if your Cricut isn't calibrated exactly correct and you've noticed when you try to cut out images, it cuts into part of your actual design. By leaving bleed on, it will put a little colored edge, like for this blue, it will have a blue colored edge uh, that matches the colors in this gradient, and it'll have blue colored edges, light and dark, around these blue stripes. So if for this portion, that portion would be okay, but for this portion, just to make sure that it wouldn't cut into your image. So all the white areas would just be fine, but um, it would just try to uh, compensate so that it wouldn't cut into your actual image. If your machine is cutting great, it seems to be cutting on the edge, it needs to cut, feel free to turn bleed off and you won't have to worry about having you know any kind of edge on there. So I'm going to go ahead, I leave it on. Some Every now and then I will turn it off. So what you'll do, you'll go ahead and hit print. Once you hit print, it's going to go to the printer that you want it to go to. Once it begins printing, you'll go ahead and hit continue here. I, I don't have it lit up because, like I said, my machine isn't turned on right now. So you would click here to continue, and then it would prompt you to put it on the mat and to put your mat through the cutter to cut out your image. And that's all you do. Then... To put these images together, I'll just do a virtual assembly. Once they're both cut out, you're going to take your two images, put them side by side like I have them here, and you're going to take your glue gun. I'm going to zoom in. You're going to take your glue gun, and you're going to run glue right down here, and then you're going to grab... I want this one on top. Once you put your glue here, you're going to grab your side and you're just going to bring it here and glue it in place. So then that will give you this joined image. And now all you have to do, let me move it over a little, on here, and now all you have to do, you're going to fold it here, you're going to float, fold here where you glued it together, you're going to fold here, you fold all of your bottom flaps, and then you're going to put some hot glue on this um, this little tab here and glue it to the underside of this side of your box. And then all you do is push the small ends up first and then put your fold your wide ends up and glue the bottom shut and you've made your gable box. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and showing you how you can quickly uh, make a gable box master and then use it to over and over again to make any gable boxes you might want to design. Um, if you would like to have me completely show you how the gable box is assembled to make it easier, just leave me a, a comment and I will make a quick tutorial on that. Please don't forget to hit the like button and if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And hit the bell if you'd like to be notified the minute I have up new tutorials. I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel. I will see you next time.